hello guys welcome to solving solutions on the channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems it's nine seven in class again today how have you been on today's tutorial we are going to show you how to model solar radiation right good so now you know we all need the power of the sun to work for us so we are going to show you um, using a digital elevation model how to calculate the amount of solar energy that different um, parts of the terrain enjoys right good so it is a crucial process used to estimate the amount of solar energy used by the earth's surface right good so it is influenced by different factors like the slope aspect shading and time of the year alongside the position that has a latitude and longitude so it has different application and you know how to identify where your renewable energy plants will be you know for solar panels or solar farms you know agricultural planting urban planning and um, all of that right good so we are using um arcgis on today's tutorial and then we definitely need them um, the digital elevation model which we have loaded and then you've seen so we are going to use them um, the area solar radiation tool that's in the special analyst toolbox right good and then we are going to populate with the data filling the parameters and then we are going to what get our results right so let's come back to the arcgis now um, on arcgis we have the special analyst tools and then under the special analyst tool we have what the solar radiation right good so we click on area solar radiation so it derives the incoming solar radiation from a raster surface right good so the input raster would be the digital elevation model we have here so we have the output by default to be this and then the latitude optional so it's always very important to click on each of the parameters so that you can read what the help that is provided by actions right so um for the time configuration it's also optional however you have um, four options to choose if you need for a particular day for special days rather we have different categories here the summer solids the equinox and then the winter solids right good so if you want it within a day we have 0 to 24 hours so you just specify the day there is calendar option so um the parameter uses the count right good it uses the count for each day of the month so for january 31st of a year we are going to have about 31 year right good so when we have gotten to february 1st we are going to have 32 so that's the other the day number of the year runs right could the day number not really the date so if you want to pick a different a different date you can actually scroll like this you know using this toggle to move left or right and then you click on any of the day you want then when you select ok you have what the day number so we have start time for zero that's zero zero to what to 24 hours right good then if you also need multiple days in a in a year and then you specify the year 2024 then the start day will be around january that should be what the fifth right good that's the number of the day and then maybe the end day 160 so that's around june right good so when you modify it when you change it you are going to see what something else here then for the day interval we have 14 if you read what the help you are going to see what um the default value is 14 bi-weekly right good that's um twice a week then for the hour interval we have 0 0.5 you know then you can still come up to the topographic parameters now some of these options are actually some of these parameters are actually optional right good so you can choose to leave them as default as they are or you populate them with um, the information that you need to suit your maybe your result so for the z factor when the units are the same for your x y and z you use one and then if you're using different linear units maybe feet and meter you know the constant and then you impute it there right good then for the slope and aspect um, input um, type you should use it from what the digital elevation model that is provided right good then calculation um, direction we have 32 
that's the number of azimuth directions used when calculating the view shade right good so for the radiation parameters we still have some of the default values so it all boils down to when you want to modify it you modify it to suit your narrative however if you want to go with the default you just leave all of the options as they are modify the date and time maybe the time configuration and then you just click on ok to run right good so we have a result for the area solar radiation and then from the output we can see on our color scale or the color scheme we have here that it ranges from 690 to 790,000 plus towards 817,000 plus right good so and then it shows that um, most part of the terrain receives what very high solar radiation right good so um, it's all red because it depicts what the color scheme we have so if we decide to modify this color scheme to something like this that will help us good okay let's see let's keep it like this but so you now see some shades of um, blue those areas can be seen as areas with what um, lower um, solar radiation right good so you know we have a a break of the color ramp we are using and then we now have about four or three colors so each of the colors now have their different classes and then we can see clearly unlike when all of them were reddish so from here we can see maybe this purple or maybe this red or this is blue or something so we can now see what the amount of solar radiation that this part of the terrain what um has right good so from there different um, information can be derived just like um, we got from the application that um, for renewable energy planning agricultural planning urban planning ecological studies and rest of that now for the unit let's scroll down we are done with these parameters now let's look at the outcome that's the high radiation values represents areas receiving high amounts of sunlight typically flat or south facing slopes in the northern hemisphere the low radiation values represent areas receiving what less sunlight such as the north facing slopes steep valleys or maybe regions um, shaded by terrains right good now for the unit which is um, also very important the results are typically in watts per hour square meters per day right good so we have um, wh per meter square per day right good so it is very important that um, we note that the different values we are going to have here for the high or low or depending on the value it's having that um, watts per meter square per day right good as a unit so if we use the identify tool to select randomly so 814850 then um, if we come up to where it's a bit bluish it's seven and you see now it's a bit lower compared to where it was reddish right good so this can also help you if you have some sample points to pick for those sample points so that you can know exactly what the value is for those points right good so we believe we have introduced you to or we have shown you how to use this um, arcgis area solar radiation tool under the special analyst tools to um, calculate the amount of radiation that um, different terrain um, different part of the earth surface um, actually enjoys during different parts of the year right good so we are going to see you on the next tutorial and sure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye